Uh, I think we're going to get started. Uh, we were waiting. I know some of the folks said that the traffic is nasty. But one of the feedback we got last year was that, you know, we should start later. But obviously, we should start to try to start early. So I was joking with our panelists here earlier, the speakers, that maybe we should start next year at 7 AM. <laughs> <laughs> Only the East Coast people will show up. So uh, by the way, my name is Prakash Panjwani. Those of you who haven't met me, I'm the general manager for SafeNet's Software Rights Management Division. Um, and I want to welcome you here at our licensing live event. It's our fifth year, I believe, uh, of licensing live. I started actually in UK the first time around, probably the fourth year in, in the general Bay Area. And you know, it's amazing to see that very rarely do the brands and the events stick the way this one has for us. I mean, I, we were talking about earlier here that typically you have new marketing people come in, and the first thing they want to do is rebrand the event. We have not done that either. <laughs> and the name has stuck, the event has stuck. We have gone from not just a physical event, the virtual side of it with the blogging and the other aspects have also grown around it. And it's become truly a, an area for all the licensing experts, which I know is still a very niche field for a lot of the folks in the room, as would recognize as well, for one forum to be there and really be able to discuss and debate issues related to software licensing. However, this, this year we have tried to change a couple of things. Um, we may not have taken the feedback on the start time seriously. But we did take the feedback from some of our customers, uh, which was that they wanted to dig more into our products as well. So we have added a second day. And those of you are probably already aware of it. If not, uh, we'll make sure you uh, reach out to one of us later in the day, that we have a second day tomorrow focused purely on SafeNet products. And it's really a forum for the customers to get together and give us direct feedback uh, on, on what we're building towards in the future as well. So we, a smaller group but very interactive as well, the way we have designed the session. So if you're, if you're a customer of SafeNet, definitely, hopefully you're planning to come back or, or stay here for the event. But the first day is still what it used to be, or it has been for those of you who've been here before, and which is a completely undiluted view of licensing. So we have not tried to impose any products or anything around it, very much focused on the topics that are on top of what we believe our customers' minds and the people we speak with. And that's really what this, this day today is going to be about. And if you look at, um, you know, for, I've been with this business now since 2004, um, which I, know, I don't want to go into midlife crisis right in front of the whole audience, but it's been a long time in this business. And uh, for, in eight years, you know, what's fun to see is how it's evolved. Uh, and I think if I look at the evolution, it's really around three very much interconnected aspects. You know, one is, to me, the industry trends, which is always to see how software business is changing for companies around. The second is you know, how our customers or the people we work with, the people in this room, uh, most of you react to those industry trends. How, and by the way, we serve a very wide variety of customers, right? From applications that, that range dramatically in, in, in their usage and who uses them. So it's interesting to see how our different verticals and the different customers we have react to those trends. And the third is how, to, how the vendors react, companies like us. You know, how do they embrace or the change or, or the lack thereof sometimes? And sometimes you move too fast ahead. Sometimes you have to realize that you know, you're not moving fast enough to meet the challenges of the customers that are, that are in front of you. But if I look at those three interconnected aspects, the one thing that, to me at least, remains common is that it's still at the core is still software licensing. But it just keeps getting broader and broader. I remember eight years ago when my first in involvement with this business, uh, at least for us, it was very much around the customers we dealt with were all about piracy. I remember people used to quote studies from BSA and all kinds of forum, Business Software Alliance in that case, about piracy and, and what that meant and how licensing was there to prevent it. And then it went from that to more electronic license delivery and those kind of notions. And then today it's grown even further and it's very much about the operational elements of licensing. You know, how do you actually create the right system for your end customers? And then beyond that, it's about, you know, it went from the operations pieces to the automation of how your customers can actually go through the whole process of being able to, to receive the software, deliver the license to them, and be able to have a very transparent approach to what they're actually using. And so the core is still licensing, but it's become and I guess it's just an evolution of times of IT systems in general. It's all about automation and operational efficiencies 
and how you actually interact with your customers. And it's amazing to see that evolution over the last several years. And if you look at the agenda today, I think you will, do we have the agenda? I think we're going to get to it. So the agenda actually pretty much reflects you know, some of the same things. We're going to lead off with kind of more of the industry view of software monetization, uh, you know, kick that off in the morning session before our break. And then you will have our SafeNet team come up and kind of give you an operating definition, I would say, of software monetization. And the reason for that is that, and as I said earlier, we have a very wide variety of customers. And it's amazing to see when you start the first engagement with somebody, there's always one thing the problem that they're trying to solve that drives them to us or to any other vendor in the space. But then when you look at our definition, all the things that you deal with when you think about licensing, I hope that certainly that framework we present today is something that you could use back at, at your company as well to start asking those same, same questions of your counterparts in the company. So that, that's what that session is in the middle. And then we're going to end up actually listening to you. you know, so kind of listen to some of your experiences about licensing, and there's a wider variety of speakers to, to go through that at that uh, stage as well. So that's how kind of the agenda flows today. Uh, a few things on logistics before I hand over to our first speaker. I think first of all, Q&A. I think for the first couple of sessions, we're going to keep the questions towards the end, uh, actually for the first three sessions, very likely. And then for the, the afternoon sessions, because they're more case study driven and more about the experiences, we definitely want to make it even more interactive during the session. So most of the speakers have agreed that they would rather take their questions, your questions along the way. Um, every now and then I might have to step in and be rude if I think we're uh, not on, on the clock or some topics we're going into a rat hole, well, I'll definitely pull you guys back. Uh, but there's also a panel at the end that most of our speakers would be able to attend and, and you'll have another opportunity then as well. Uh, the other aspect there is, by the way, not that our speakers are intimidating by any nature, but if there are questions that you don't want to ask directly, you can also tell them to me. Catch me in the hallway during the breaks and say, hey, during the panel, make sure we have a discussion on this topic. So happy to, to do that as well, um, if, if that's your preferred method there. Um, let's see, what else on logistics? I think the other part, um, I don't think they're even in the room. The two folks I really want to acknowledge, and I think you're going to need them throughout the day as, as you wish. I don't think they're in the room, are they, Donna and Marcy? All right, um, I tell you, these events are one of the toughest things to organize. Uh, it may, I don't know if it's easy, easy for me to at least show up the night, the day before and say, hey, I'm here, what do I talk about tomorrow? But the other folks, you know, the amount of effort that goes into it, and we have two folks, Donna Mullen, who some of you met before as well, she's kind of responsible for the logistics of the events, and then Marcy, who's been, who joined us last year, and it's an amazing job. I know I've interacted with a lot of folks in this room as well in getting the content and the right, you know, components organized the right way here. And if there are any questions throughout the day, absolutely reach out to them um, on logistics or any of the other factors as well. So they're both, I think, outside right now. Um, and definitely if any questions, you can talk to them as well or to any of us here in, in the room. A final comment on social networking, right? So we are, I told you, a virtual and a physical event, as we always say. So there is Different ways you're going to get. I think there's also a card at each of your table. Um, tweet away as you wish about the event, right? But just remember, this event is also being recorded, but your tweets obviously are always recorded. So either way, it's a public event. I, mean, I should have mentioned that earlier. This event is being recorded today. So those are for speakers and stuff. Just, just be aware of that. Uh, back to social side. I mean, I think there is a, there's a tweet. Twitter side, I think you have directions on how to tag different things there if you want to talk about any of the trends here. Actually, I was joking with somebody in the hallway. I was at a wedding this weekend, and um, my niece was getting married, and her husband was caught doing his vows from an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. And it was interesting. The reaction in the, in, the, uh, in the wedding afterwards during the reception was, you could see some people were like, that's just not done. The other folks like, that's really cool. And actually, the other jokes, of course, then flew out, which is about, you know, he should have just tweeted his vows to his wife rather than even saying them, you know, put it on his Facebook and rather than having to, to, to speak in front of the audience. But anyway, so definitely um, you have that day instructions as well. And with that, I think any other things anybody want to add, Michelle? Or I think we're good. So with that, I'm going to introduce Alan to 
uh, as our first speaker. Alan comes to us, uh, is the co-founder of SD Times and also the research director. And I'll let Alan kind of go a little bit more into his own intro as necessary um, on, on your own. But Alan's going to talk to us about some of the opportunities in software monetization space. Alan, all yours. Thanks. <laughs> 